Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, I have a pattern to show you that has not happened in around 270 days on the Bitcoin chart, but guess what? It just did. I want to bring your attention to the last couple of days on Bitcoin. What do you see here? Well, the astute among you may notice that we saw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven green candlesticks in a row. If you don't know, that is actually an extremely bullish thing on Bitcoin that does not happen very often. It sure doesn't happen in bear markets. And the last time it happened was in June of last year, almost a year ago. Now, yes, today's daily candlestick at the moment, anyway, is red, and, you know, you would expect it to be after seven green candlesticks, but this is actually an extremely bullish sign, one that I want to explain to you in today's video. It's not just that. There's a lot of other shorter-term technical analysis that we're going to be getting to in today's video. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. If you do enjoy today's video, as always, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel when you do that. Link is in the description down below for the like and subscribe button. Sure, yeah, down below, anywhere, somewhere down there, yeah. While we're rocking some shameless self-promotion, also follow me on Twitter, at CryptoJeb. We're trying to post over there daily. Check us out. Anyway, guys, I think it's going to be a good video. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and dive right on into it. Mm. I love coffee, guys. Check this out. Everyone but the newer subscribers will recognize this mug. It says, hey there, hot stuff. So, uh, you know, hey there, hot stuff. You didn't know a cryptocurrency technical analyst could flirt with you on stream, did you? Apparently he can. Oh man, that's really weird. 95% of my audience is male. Ugh. Anyway, onto the chart. I don't know what that intro was, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyway, getting onto the actual chart, it becomes very apparent that we have seen seven green candlesticks in a row. And before I go any farther, let me just mention something. I understand we're in an ascending wedge. I'm going to get to that here in a second. Yes, I actually do think we're going to see maybe a day or two of downtrend for Bitcoin. So don't at me in the comment section. I realize. Anyway, back to the shorter term analysis. Thank you. The reason this is significant, this is something that we haven't talked about in nearly a year here on the channel. And the reason we haven't talked about it in nearly a year is because it hasn't happened in nearly a year. It's very uncommon to see seven green candlesticks in a row. Go ahead. I encourage you. Check your own charts. Look for the last time that you see seven green in a row. It used to happen more back during the 2018 bear market and the 2019 bull market. But the most recent time we saw this happen was in late July of 2019. As you can see right here, Bitcoin rallied for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven green candlesticks. And yes, I hear you in the comment section already saying, but Jeb, that wasn't bullish. That was the beginning of a big downtrend. You're right. I understand that. No technical indicator is foolproof. But by the way, Bitcoin was actually very bullish right here. We were just massively over where the stock to flow ratio was predicting we should be. Right now, we're significantly below it and Bitcoin is undervalued in my opinion, as opposed to us being overvalued at this time. So that gives a lot of credence to this. And this line is really important. We're going to come back to that. But for now, I want to show you a couple other examples of this. Before that example in July, we also saw seven or actually in this case, eight green in a row right there. Eight green in a row happens every two years or so, by the way. And looking back in time, we have to go a very, very long way to see the last seven green in a row. In fact, unless I'm mistaken, I believe we have to go all the way back to the end of the 2017 bull market right here. One, two, three, four, five. This candlestick is red, but on some charts it's green. Don't ask me why I remember that, but I do. Eight, nine. Excuse me, eight. So what we're saying is in the last three years, we've seen three instances of seven green in a row. But here's the interesting thing. Seven green in a row in those cases showed up at the top of a trend when the market was already massively overbought, massively over exuberant. Bitcoin was already far, far above where it should have been based on the stock to flow ratio prediction of between a five to eight thousand dollar Bitcoin, depending on the exact time. But what we just saw is interesting because Bitcoin is massively undervalued right now. And we just saw seven green in a row with an undervalued Bitcoin for, as far as I can tell, the first time in at least three years. You see where I'm going with this? I'm not necessarily talking about short-term analysis in the next couple of days, because yes, I see the short-term rising wedge. I'm going to get to that in a second. But that is an incredibly bullish sign. Now, I understand that the whole global economy is having trouble right now. I understand employment is spiking to nearly historic levels and it's not even done yet. I realize massive amounts of businesses are going just that out of business. But I also know how to read the cryptocurrency markets. It's literally my job. And one of the things I'm seeing right now is I'm seeing quite a lot of people actually coming back to the space. And people left for the last couple of weeks, but they're starting to come back. We're seeing that in the subscriber growth and the viewership of these videos. The videos are pretty much similar content. So when I see fluctuations in the viewership, oftentimes it's reflecting a fluctuation in the amount of people in cryptocurrency currency, the volume would show that as well. Bitcoin is seeing a resurgence in a lot of people that left the market because of doom and gloom back a, w a month ago, and they're coming back to the space now because they see, wow, Bitcoin's outperforming the stock market. Bitcoin's outperforming the precious metal markets. Bitcoin is outperforming the oil market by a ridiculous margin. 
a lot of people that left the space, they're coming back. And I don't think it's just them. I think we're going to see a lot more people coming back into the cryptocurrency space over the next couple of months and over the next couple of years as they realize the problems in our global economy. By the way, guys, whenever a crisis happens, hopefully you would think, okay, things will go back to normal. After 9-11, things never went back to normal. If they went back to normal, TSA wouldn't have existed because back to normal means going back to the way it was before, back to the normal. TSA was not normal, so we never went back to normal after 9-11. After 2008, things never went back to normal because before 2008, there were all kinds of subprime mortgages being dealt out that should not have been happening. After 2008, a lot of those things were rectified. 2008, we never went back to normal. In the same way, things are never going to go back to normal after this. They're going to change. In my opinion, the governments of the world are going to be just a little bit more social than they used to be because they realize they can get away with it and expand their power even more, which is unfortunate, but it is true. The point I'm trying to make is this. As time marches on, technical indicators and the fundamentals are proving that Bitcoin is looking like a better investment now than perhaps any other investment that I can look at, including real estate. I love real estate. I want to get into it pretty soon, but I'm waiting for a real estate crash because I know one's going to come following this massive recession. Guys, here's a statistic for you. Over the last two months, over $60 trillion in the global economy have vanished. Fortune 500 companies, their values are down hundreds of billions of dollars each. Unemployment in America for a little while here is probably going to be nearly 40%. The Federal Reserve's balance sheet is over twice what it ever has been in the past, borrowing from the future to fix now. We're sacrificing the good times later to help with the bad times now. And it's screwing everything up. So what happens when everything is going to hell in a handbasket? People start looking for an alternate investment. And we're sitting on top of one. To use an analogy, I wasn't very popular in middle school. To be fair, there was a good reason why I wasn't very popular in middle school. In fact, I hated middle school. So what I would do is after middle school, I would go home and I would sit at home and play Minecraft because... I could play Minecraft on my own. I was in my own world, had absolutely nothing to do with the rest of the world, got my mind away from middle school, which sucked. The reason I did that was because I wanted to be in a completely different ballpark than the one that I was at every day while I was doing schoolwork. Kind of a similar thing is going to start happening here pretty soon. People are going to want to get away from traditional markets. They're going to start wanting to get away from stock markets and real estate markets and anything that the Federal Reserve or the Central Bank of Europe has their hands on because... They're kind of screwing things up, even though I think they're doing the best they can, to be fair. People are going to have a distaste. They're going to have a bad taste in their mouth for traditional markets. And that money has to go somewhere because the $60 trillion that vanished, it's not gone forever. It is going to come back. I'm not getting into how that happens, but it's going to come back over the next 10 years, maybe even less time than that. And when it does, it's not going to go to the same place that it did before. Some of that money is going to go into new streams. Some of that money is going to go into new avenues. And one of those places is going to be Bitcoin. Bitcoin was already looking fundamentally bullish. And then what do we see? We see a seven green in a row pattern that happens less than once a year and instead of happening at the top of a trend when the market's already blown its top off and there's no more profit to make it happens below the stock to flow ratio which at the time of recording this video is predicting an $8,500 Bitcoin and by the way in case you forgot there's a Bitcoin having coming in two weeks so what does that stock to flow ratio do? It moonshots to 100 grand. Bitcoin is massively undervalued now for many different reasons. One because many people cannot simply afford to invest in Bitcoin and that is going to change over the next year. Two, because stock to flow ratio is predicting a much higher Bitcoin. If you look at this chart, it becomes pretty obvious the stock to flow ratio is a decent predictor of Bitcoin's price action. I think we can agree on that. And Bitcoin had a massive crash that had to do with a temporary fundamental that did not have to do with Bitcoin. So because of that also, all the growth that Bitcoin should have been doing over the last three months, the fundamental growth continued, the chart growth went negative, which means that there's even more room to catch up. We're undervalued right now. A lot of people are asking me, hey Jeb, is now a good time to invest in Bitcoin? I personally think if you're going to hold it for more than five years, it's a great time to invest in Bitcoin. That's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Don't sue me. Not your mom. See this? Not your mom. But what I am is a cryptocurrency technical analyst, and I understand these markets. And I also understand, at least as much as one person possibly can, the global economy and how it's functioning right now. And I see the writing on the wall, guys. Is now a good time to invest in Bitcoin? I think if you're going to hold it for five years, yes. Now, let's talk about short term a little bit more. The reason I mentioned this at the beginning of the video is because I know somebody in the comment section is going to think they're a genius and say, Jeb, you forgot about the rising wedge. Isn't Bitcoin going to break bearish out of this? Don't rising wedges fall to the downside 70% of the time? Don't you teach exactly that in your own course? Yes, I do, and I'm well aware. And to be honest with you, Bitcoin isn't looking ridiculously bullish on the very short term. What we've been talking about in this video is the next few months. As far as this market right here, honestly, Bitcoin traded sideways, rallied just a little bit, and then kind of 
traded sideways again. And to be honest with you, this kind of looks like a head and shoulders pattern. So is Bitcoin going to break to the downside? I'm putting my weight in that bucket. I have a feeling Bitcoin is going to have some kind of capitulation over the next few days and pull back to at absolute maximum, probably somewhere around $7,000. Might not even go that far. We saw a similar thing happen over here. Bitcoin was rallying, hit its head, rallied some more, fell, fell, and then we continued rallying. Bitcoin's really trading sideways right now. Remember, everything I'm talking about is, for the moment, being overshadowed by a massively bearish global economy. And what is Bitcoin doing? It's still managing to rally when the entire world is falling apart right now. Just think about what's going to happen when the puzzle pieces start getting put back together. I want you to be thinking over the next year about the underlying intrinsic value of Bitcoin. Where should Bitcoin be? How much should Bitcoin be worth? How many people should really be coming into the space? Does the price and does the market cap match the amount of development in this industry? With all of the people that are going to be disenfranchised by the global catastrophe that's going on with the banking system and the Federal Reserve and everything else, how many people are going to be looking at other investment avenues? I want you to be thinking about those kind of things. Thinking about these is what will make you money. Because like I said in a previous video, and someone pointed out that I said this in kind of a crass way, so let me rephrase what I said in the last video. People in 2008 did make a load of money. A lot of people got very badly hurt. I got very badly hurt in 2008. My entire family did. I understand that. A lot of people are getting very badly hurt in the pandemic. I realize that. And I wish 2008 hadn't have happened. And I wish that this whole thing, the news, hadn't have happened. But that being said... You have to take the silver lining of everything. That's a very important life lesson. And a silver lining in 2008 was that you could have made a lot of money in real estate and a lot of money in stocks. The same thing is going to be true here. This is a catastrophe with the global economy, the likes of which we have not seen in a dozen years. And when these things happen, the people that are in a position to do something about it and to move because they have liquid cash on the side. Luckily, I have a lot of it. Hopefully, you have a lot of it. Hopefully, you have a lot of Bitcoin and stuff that you can trade with. When people have liquidity on the side, and they can make moves in times like these, that is when a lot of money is made. Guys, I want you to remember one thing, and that is that most billionaires are not made when the market is good. They're made when the market is bad. And on top of that, they have a vision about where things are going. The market's getting bad. It's going to get better. Do you have a vision about where things are going? I think I know where things are going. I can't know for sure, but I do think that Bitcoin is going to come out the other side of this more profitable than ever before. But don't take my word for it. I want you to do your own analysis. As always, I want you to come to your own conclusions, do your own charting, and come up with those decisions for yourself. At the end of the day, what's most important is being able to sleep with yourself at night. So if you make a mistake on a trade, I don't want it to be because you did what I said. I want it to be because you did what you said and you were confident in yourself and nevertheless, it didn't work out. If you can't sleep with yourself at night, What's even the point of being alive? That's a piece of wisdom right there that I got from someone very much uh, wiser than I, and I would recommend you live by it. Anyway, guys, I think I've made my point in today's video. The technical analysis is very important. The seven green in a row is very important. The fact that Bitcoin's in a rising wedge and may have a short-term downtrend over the next couple of days, it's important. But what's most important is this. There's opportunity, and in opportunity, there's hope. And right now, I think what we all need is a healthy dose of hope. Keep working. You got this, guys. I believe in you. We're going to make it through this. We've been through worse. We will be through worse. This isn't nothing. We got it. Stick in there. I know it's getting hard. It's going to be over soon. But guys, that is going to wrap it out for today's video. Before I go, though, I do first want to ask you guys to hit that like and subscribe button. You thought I was going to the outro. If you did enjoy today's video, seriously, though, it really helps out the channel when you hit that like and subscribe button. Helps with the YouTube algorithm. Also, leaving a comment helps for the YouTube algorithm. Before we wrap the video out, though, I want to give you guys a bit of a reward for watching until the end. I like doing this. I want to hear what Netflix shows or Hulu shows or Quibbly or whatever that service that I keep getting ads for shows you've been watching lately. I haven't been watching television. I have been working like 12 hours a day every day for like a month now. So I don't have time or I haven't given myself time to watch any television. Um, but I know a lot of you guys are. So let me know what you've been watching down below. I'm really curious. Maybe you guys can give me some recommendations. I've heard Peaky Blinders is a good show that I should watch. Well, let me know down below. I watched the first episode. It looked pretty cool. But anyway, guys, for real, though, that now is going to wrap it out for today's video. I'm just kidding. Follow me on Twitter. Now it's going to wrap it out for this video. Before I go, though, I do first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching. As always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh, I got a real good feeling. Hey.